Hello, everyone. This is Mr. Bryce, and we are doing Introduction to Functions, Unit 2, Page 1, Common Core Algebra 2, Non-Regions Version. If you don't understand what I'm saying, you can always listen to the genius that wrote these worksheets by scanning that QR code. Let's get into it. Most higher-level mathematics is built upon the concept of a function. Like most of the important concepts in mathematics, the definition of a function is very simple and to the point of being easily overlooked. Don't make a mistake when you understand this definition. Make sure you know the following definition. Make sure you know the following definition, because we've been doing functions for several years now. And yes, we have to know what a function is. A function is any rule that assigns exactly one output value, output f of x, g of x, q of x, uh, f of t, m of t, q of t, for each input value, the x, the t, okay? These rules can be expressed in different ways, the most common being equations, graphs, and table values. Let's put up here that if the output is f of t, the input is t. Whatever is inside the parentheses it's going to be the input. Okay, we call the input variable independent. Input, independent, input, independent. And the output values dependent. Input, independent. Exercise one. An internet music service offers a plan whereby they pay a flat monthly fee of $5 and then can download songs for 10 cents each. 10 cents each. What are the independent and dependent variables of this scenario? Let me see. What is the input? And then what comes out? Um, if I choose to download 10 songs, I pay a buck plus the flat monthly fee. But if I decide then to really download 30 songs, I am going to pay $3 and then the fee. So the input is the number of songs or the downloads. The input is the independent downloads. The dependent is how much it costs. Oh, if I download 30 songs, it costs $3 plus the flat monthly fee. Fill in the table below for a variety of independent values. Oh, okay. Fill in the table below. If I don't do anything this month because I'm in vacation in Hawaii and I don't want to listen to music, I just want to listen to the soft lapping sounds of the waves, I am going to pay not nothing, I'm going to pay $5. If I do download five songs, it's five times 10 cents. So it is $5 and 50 cents. If I decide to download 10 songs, it's going to be $6. And if I decide to download 20 songs, it's going to be $7. Let the number of downloads be represented by the variable x, and the amount charged in dollars be represented by the y. Write an equation. It doesn't say write a function. It says write an equation. Write an equation. It does not say function. If it said function, we'd have to write f of x. But it says write an equation, so we can do y equals x y equals what's changing and i don't mean like let me back up a second what's the rate of change from one song to two songs it's 10 cents more right or zero songs to 10 songs it's a buck more how much did it change well let's just go incremental zero to one 10 cents one to two 10 cents two to three 10 cents 10 cents is the rate of change independent variable is x plus the constant. If I plug a zero in there, what's the answer supposed to be? If I plug a zero in there, what's the answer supposed to be? Five. Based on the equation, that one, you found in part C, produce a graph of this function from zero to 40. Do not go beyond 40, but remember it says zero is less than or equal to less than or equal to. So that means fill in, fill in 
the zero right there. Got it? Ten songs up there. What did it say for ten songs? It said six dollars. Wait a minute. Is that six dollars? Yes, it is. Check the scale. Five to seven fifty. Five, five fifty. Six, six fifty. Seven, seven fifty. Goes up by fifty cents each time. Two, four, six, eight. 10. Now, if I do 20 songs, it's going to be $2 more. Are you sure it's going to be $2 more? Let's check. Y equals 10 cents times 20 songs plus 5. It's not going to be $2 more. It's going to be $2 more than 5. Y equals $2 plus five dollars that's seven bucks so we got to bring this up to seven twenty goes up to seven thirty goes up to eight 40 goes up to 9. Is it a line? Oh, here we go. Here we go. Here we go. Here we go. Am I going to go beyond? Stop! Don't go any farther. Oh, I want to draw an arrow. Don't draw an arrow. Don't. Don't draw an arrow. Think before you draw an arrow. Can I go below 0? No, because it says... Zero is our smallest number right there. Can I go above 40? No. It says X, my number, is less than or equal to 40, so I can't go above 40. Got it? Good. Next page. Uh, one of the following graphs shows a relationship where Y is a function and one does not. Draw a vertical line whose equation is X equals 3. Um, you might want to go left to right, but it says vertical. I'll use that one right there. So vertical. X equals three. One, two, three. And see, it crosses it twice. Crosses twice. Give all output values for it. It's going to be the output. Output. Right there. One, two, three, four. That's graph A, 4, and negative 1, negative 2, negative 3, negative 4. Relationship B, draw the vertical line at 3, right there. How many values do we have? Only one, and it is negative 1, negative 2. Negative 2. Input is 3. Output is 4, negative 4. Output is negative 2. Explain which of these relationships is a function and why. For every input, there is only one answer. A has two answers, not a function. B has only one answer. Therefore, it is a function. If you're listening, you understood what those three dots in the shape of a triangle meant. It means therefore. It means what? It means therefore. Those three dots of the triangle mean therefore. Raise your hand right now and tell me, okay, you're at home listening to this. When you come into class, tell me what those three dots mean. Got it?
good. The graph of the function y equals x squared minus 4x plus 1 is shown below. There it is. State this function's y-intercept. y-intercept, positive 1. You could do 0, 1. Between what two consecutive integers does the x-intercept lie? X-intercept, where does it cross the x-axis? It Oh, the larger one. There we go. One, two, three. Between three and four. Draw a horizontal line at x equals negative two. Horizontal line. Using these two graphs, the horizontal line that I just drew and the parabola, find all values to solve the equation below. Oh, see, x equals negative two. There it is, and there it is. Y is, x is one, x is one, and x is four. X equals one, and x equals four. If I plug a one and a four in there, they're gonna check. One squared plus erk minus, minus, I said minus, four times one plus one, equals negative 2. 1 minus 4 plus 1 equals negative 2. Negative 2 equals negative 2. It checks. Now plug in a 4. 4 squared minus 4 times 4 plus 1 equals negative 2. 16. Whoa! 16 minus 16 plus 1 is negative 2. No, 1 does not equal negative 2, so I recounted x equals 3. Plug in a 3. 3 squared minus 4 times 3 plus 1 is negative 2. 9 minus 12 plus 1 is negative 2. Negative 3 plus 1 is negative 2. Negative 2 is negative 2. It checks. Good. Bazinga. We're done. See you later. If you have any questions, ask me in class. Bye-bye.